The MCU is in trouble, and so is one of their lead actors, Mr. Jonathan Majors. As the Marvels tanks at the box office, it seems like some changes need to be made, and it looks like some of those decisions were made longer ago than we realized. Let's talk about what could be the cancellation of an entire Avengers film here on That Park Place. Hi, I'm Jonas J. Campbell, and I'm an investigative reporter for That Park Place. One of the strange things about this job is that you get to know about things before they hit the mainstream media, whether it's through scoopers or just paying attention to trends here and there. When it came to following the Jonathan Major story, it would have been very easy to vilify the man in the press. Unfortunately, it seems a pattern is starting to emerge there. Many people assume that this would have precipitated some kind of a reaction from Marvel, but they were on record saying they never considered replacing him in Loki or in Quantum Mania or any of the films that he is currently supposed to be a part of. While there's been no official word on an exit for Jonathan Majors, it does seem like the next big Marvel team-up film, in this case it would be Marvel's The Avengers Kang Dynasty, is going a different direction that may not include its title star. Let's get into the discussion. Let's talk about this story out of that park place. Um, it looks like, it looks yeah. like, with all the fallout from the Marvels, that Kang Dynasty... Uh, might be on the rocks. They might be canceling or, uh, let, let's say, moving in another direction from an Avengers film. Now, I remember the days when Avengers films were uh, a big darn deal. Um, I, In fact, I remember going to see the first Avengers film because I thought, there is no way this is going to work. They're going to take, what, uh, six different characters here and try to stack them all on top of one another and we're going to see what kind of monstrosity comes out of it. Uh, but uh, obviously, Joss Whedon stuck the landing. Uh, in they Avengers Age of did, Ultron yeah. got even bigger. And then by the time we get to Infinity War, uh, Infinity War, I personally, I think Infinity War is like the peak of the MCU. And then oh, yeah. and then and then we've got this great epilogue where they they fix it all in uh, Endgame. But now it looks like the uh, writer of Kang Dynasty has been removed from the film because Marvel is going in another direction. This one. Well, from I, I think, Jonas, at this point, if he's gone, we can no longer refer to him as the writer of King Dynasty. I think you need to go back to his old title, which is the writer of 300 episodes of Jimmy Kimmel Live and one episode of Rick and Morty. Oh, that, that's who wow. Refer to. Oh, man. That's, <laughs> let me that's see who they tap to write their Avengers film. <laughs> and Quantumania. <laughs> oh, the writer of Quantumania. Well, there you go. There you go. Now we can call him that. <laughs> uh, great success there. A new rumor claims that Jeff Loveness was removed from Avengers Kang Dynasty because Marvel Studios will be taking the Marvel Cinematic Universe in a different direction from Kang the Conqueror. Uh, here he is, uh, looking like a proper theater kid right there. He who remains. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, this guy, Jeff Snyder, uh, he's usually on the Hot Mike podcast with, I want to say, Joe Roca. And, John uh, Rocha, yeah. John Rocha. Okay, sorry. Uh, Scooper Jeff Snyder reported it, rumor, uh, and and I'm I'm not going to repeat it uh, again here, but uh, the rumor claims that Loveness is off the film and no longer working for Marvel because Marvel is moving in a different direction. Joanna Robinson, there's a familiar name on the House mm. of R podcast, detailed we saw the Quantum Mania post credit where Kang is everywhere, but I actually heard someone recently. I was asking about, so the screenwriter, Jeff Loveness, who wrote Quantumania, was supposed to write Kang Dynasty. And then it sort of came out that he was no longer attached to the film. Anyway, I had it confirmed to me that he's no longer working for Marvel. Uh, that's a that's a very loaded statement. Uh, first of all, uh, Vash, what, what's your reaction to, to this? Did you see Quantumania or uh, any of the recent Kang? I uh, did not. Pictures? I, I, I have not, I mean, I, I've heard Kang was the best part of Quantum Mania. I've heard his performance is, is, is very, very good, and he really kind of uh, brings, a, let's say, a, a credibility or authenticity to that role, uh, which is great. Uh, but then, obviously, we've heard about his recent struggles, and now people look at even that film a little bit differently, and a lot of people have been questioning, what is going to happen uh, now that his maybe... Uh, legal uh, yeah. issues aren't going away yeah that's uh, the, and, and we want to tread very carefully on youtube we've got a, several topics today where we want to tread very carefully right. but uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna throw this to culture casino because i know he's an expert on treading Please. carefully on youtube culture <laughs> um would you describe in in very veiled terms what is going on with jonathan majors right now uh yes uh jonathan majors ran into some uh, issues with with police because 
he and a person that he was dating at the time had a, an exchange of a physical nature uh, that led to uh, authorities being rather interested in <laughs> his behavior. Uh, and so they put, uh, they, 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 they put him um, through a legal process that has now resulted in uh, going to court at the most inopportune time for Disney. Um, the young woman with whom he had a physical disagreement uh, is, uh, is being protected until the last moment uh, when she testifies. And we will see uh, results of that in the very near future. Um, the events that happened around that were that his agency dropped him uh, and his, his management dropped him. And he had to go out and find others. He's also working with a crisis agency that just so happens to uh, be owned by the husband of the lawyer that he hired um, mm. and, that have been providing a lot of misinformation mm. uh, throughout the entire proceedings and have frustrated it, frustrated the, um, the, the judge in this case to the point where uh, he's, the, the judge is not having it any longer. Yeah. So... I'll, yeah. I'll also uh, add uh, there was yeah. a a London incident that uh, yes. authorities were involved in that was before this incident that uh, is 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 going to trial here and uh, it it seems interesting to me that while Loki was filming which is apparently how these two people met um, that is when the first incident happened at least the first that we're aware of I happened see. so uh, there's 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 beginning to emerge this sense of some kind of pattern here. And he's had colleagues call him uh, out as being rather volatile mm -hmm. um, uh, amongst think, all of that. I think that was the most surprising bit, right? Because yeah. usually you have colleagues who come out and say, oh, no, he's the greatest person on the, in the world. It's a misunderstanding. He'll get it resolved, all that. To have colleagues go out and say, yeah, he can be a little bit uh, difficult to work with was a little bit like, uh oh, um, that's uh, that's an issue. And here's the thing for Marvel. This is some big stuff here because he was supposed to be the big bad here going into um, this next phase, uh, similar to like a, a Thanos type character where, where it was going to all culminate with him. And now right out of the gate, they have these issues. And here we have this uh, this reporter, this screenwriter not being attached to this project. And well, that sets up an, a very uh, difficult scenario going forward. If you want to read that next line there, uh, Jonas. Uh, that, that I, and that I asked the person why, and they said the reason why was that his stuff, he was all wrapped up in his Kang, in this Kang storyline, and that they were likely going to be moving away from that. Or are you Oof. talking about the uh, one after that? Actually, uh, with this one, I, I did mm -hmm. want to, I had another question, and I wanted to throw this to Spencer, because I know that Spencer knows exactly what I'm talking about when I say this. Uh, Spencer, can you tell me a little bit, bit about Joanna Robinson, the uh, person who is quoted here? Joanna Robinson, where do we start? So if you guys have been aware of any MCU news in the cu past couple weeks, you probably know it's come from a book called MCU, The Reign of Marvel Studios. Well, one of the authors on that book is a woman by the name of Joanna Robinson. She currently works for The Ringer, and she is just... She is a Marvel fangirl to the point where if you guys go read that book, it is full of just like Marvel uh, fluffing. She she tries to make them look as good as possible. And the worst part is even when she's trying to make them look good, she makes them look really, really bad. So she has some contacts within the industry. She's definitely somebody I would apply a more um, Disney fan label to than a, a critical reporter. But that's who Joanna Robinson is. Uh, that's a that's a very good point, and uh, the, the the point that I've alleged in the past is that maybe maybe Kevin Feige wrote that book essentially uh, because it was it was one hundred percent cleared by Disney and Marvel legal, and anything that's negative in that book about Marvel is is pinned oh, on a, a handful of people, um, and none of them are Kevin Feige. I'll I'll say oh, that the the book the book is completely full of responsibility dodging on Feige's part. It's full of narrative shifting. It's full of like just factual error. It's all over the place. And I definitely think somebody at Marvel had to, yeah, like you said, it was cleared by lawyers and everybody. So somebody out there probably was like, uh, maybe you write this. Maybe you say that. Maybe, maybe this makes us look better. Cause it is, it is not, it's clearly a book that was written with the intention of being glowing, 
but like a glowing praise, but it's not. It, and it's kind of a feat that that's how it came out. <laughs> so interesting. The, the rumor that they are scrapping everything and bringing back the OG Avengers that kind of originated a lot of that had its genesis in this book, which is a very it's a it's a pretty long book for a fluff. It's pretty I thick. Mean, yeah. Uh, and it has three authors, but Joanna Robinson is the one that is is listed first. So, I, and, and she's kind of in the one taking the lead with all the promo, with all the press, with sort of getting it out there. She, yeah, she's the the front and center one here. So, if it, it, call me a conspiracy theorist here, but if Marvel wanted to get the word out that they are changing directions. <laughs> But they didn't want to make an official announcement that they were getting rid of their uh, diverse action star that they have put so much work into promoting. Uh, how do you think they might go about getting the idea out there that Marvel is doing big new things? Now, Jonas, if I were to be taking a sort of subtle route with that, I might have one of my uh, more dedicated, let's say, supporters talk about our plans on one of their podcasts and have that get the word out there but of course give hedge you have them use hedging language so we're not you know held to anything in the future <laughs> <laughs> right because what what marvel definitely does not need right now is a firm and fast and hard road plan that they're definitely oh, going to stick to oh, oh my goodness <laughs> why would they start now <laughs> uh, culture do you have anything you want to uh throw in here no, I think that I could not possibly have added to that or described it better. Well done. Uh, well done. Well, uh, good on Joanna Robinson's part. She, I hope she's getting paid for uh, her work on that uh, book because uh, she's essentially uh, part of the D Disney uh, Marvel oh, yeah. marketing machine at this point. Yeah, and they know who's excited about what. So uh, that's uh, that that that's all I'll say there. Okay. Well. <laughs> uh, like or, or go, were you going to just, just one more, uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Piece on the jo Joanna Robinson bit. So, all of those jokes aside, what, uh, so I actually wrote a piece on this same story for Bounding into Comics, and my main source was actually Joanna because Joanna Robinson, I guess, hosts a podcast on The Ringer called like The House of R. Yes. And it's just The Ringer's like nerd podcast, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, so to the point that they know who their audience is, they know who likes everything, Joanna Robinson drops this information in the latest episode of her podcast after three hours of discussion on just the last episode of Loki. Oh, three, wow. three hours. solid hours. She gets to the very end. And the way, and to Jonas, your point about how would you sort of, you know, hint at it and not hint at it. She's actually the one who brings up the idea of, Oh, now that so basically she's talking about the very end of Loki, where Loki takes in the multiverse into himself, grabs all the threads. He's sort of, you know, master of the multiverse overseer. And Joanna points out, go, she goes, oh, well, you know, this could totally give them the opportunity to, you know, move away from Kang if they wanted to. Uh -oh. And if you didn't know this, I, I just had this confirmed to me. She launches into, you know, just off of that point. She goes, oh, and I also know that somebody's told me Loveness isn't there anymore and they're moving away from Kang. So right. to me, that I think they did exactly that, Jonas. I think Joanna is the put your feelers out there, sort of get it, prep, at, prep the landing pad, if you will, for when they finally say no more Kang. Thank you so much for tuning into That Park Place. This clip is originally part of a That Park Place live stream, which we do every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We take comments live during the show, and uh, it is one of the better parts of my week to get to bring in everybody to have a long, deep discussion on the topics that are facing pop culture in general. Of course, if you're interested in that kind of thing, you might consider subscribing to that part place. Of course, like this video if you like this video, and share it out on social media if you know someone who might be interested in this topic. Of course, stay tuned to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media account.